in chapter number 22, and I titled it freely because I, I, I usually try to go into the verses and find something I think that kind of characterizes what I want to bring out as a main point. And freely is what stuck in my mind. And uh, we've been studying in our, in our Tuesday morning Bible studies, uh, we've been studying in the book of the Revelation starting, we're, in, we're just starting now into the fourth chapter, uh, which I'm not sure we're going to actually get to start this week, but we're right there between three and four. And uh, what we did discover was this, and I, I need some of you guys that are in that to help me, that uh, when, you, when you look at the book of the Revelation, it's not the revelation of St. John the Divine, it's the revelation of... Jesus Christ, that's right. And it's a, it's a revelation and a manifestation that was given to him uh, to give down to, to the angel, to give down to John, to give to the churches. And the reason that I keep pointing this out is because most folks still don't know who Jesus is. They don't recognize. He's not the little baby in the manger. He, he's, he's not uh, just a good man that was chosen to carry out a mission. He is almighty God. That's just all there is to it. He is the Almighty, and so he, he uh, describes that in chapter number one of the book of the Revelation, and then chapters two and three, we got to studying about the seven letters that he wrote to the seven churches that were in Asia, and uh, we got to seeing that every single time his main focus was to try to reveal to them who he was and what he wanted their, uh, the mirror of their church to reflect about him. He wants our church to reflect him to this world. He don't, he, don't want to, he don't want us to show a good group of people. Uh, if, if we have the best assembly of church members in the world and we do everything we can and meet every need in the community, the church, the, this community doesn't need to see a group of good church people. They need to see a holy God, amen? They need to see a suffering Savior hanging on the cross. They need Jesus. Not a good program. Not, not a good inspirational group of folks. So we got to remember that we're supposed to be reflecting him. So I was thinking as I went to the end of the book, now because we're studying at the beginning, I went down to the end of it. We're in chapter 22 tonight. And I thought about this. The last message that we have from our Lord written down for us in his holy word is an invitation. You're fixing to find it. It's an invitation to all men everywhere to receive this precious free gift of salvation. Please join me as we begin to read Revelation chapter number 22, starting in verse number 16. Are y'all with me? Amen. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things. Where? Where we, that's right. And in the chapters 2 and 3, as I told you about, that's where we started out with the seven letters that he sent to the seven churches that represent all the churches. And so he's, he's written this entire revelation, this in, from chapter 1 to chapter 22, verse 21. He has, he has uh, written these words to us, the churches. And he says here to signify, and he said, I sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root. He wants to remind you one more time. This is the revelation of who he is. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. I am both man and God. I, I am the one that came from the descendant line of David, but I am the one that is the bright and shining morning star. I am the hope of eternal life for all mankind, both at the same time. Verse 17, and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the bride, that's the church, say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will. <laughs> that sounds like John 3, 16. And whosoever will. Let him take the water of life freely. Amen. Freely. I'll get back to that. Verse 18. Jesus still talking says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away 
from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Do you think the book is important? Yes. Amen. Amen. That's why we stand on this all the time. That's why we fight that fight with every single body we come to. Listen, this book is imperative that you don't mess with it. Amen. You can't have Jesus and take part of the book out. You can't rewrite the book and still have the same Jesus. It, they're, they're, they're the same, and you gotta re, you got to recognize that. Please don't back down on that. Don't ever accept any substitutes for the real thing. There's only one real thing. Don't accept any substitutes. I don't know why anybody would. Somebody tried to say, well, well it's, it's the same. It's, it's, it's the same. It's only different. Well, if it's the same, then why change it? Leave it alone. Jesus said, don't take nothing out. Don't put nothing in. If you do, then you don't have no part with him. You get kicked out of the book of life. Blotted out. Uh, I, I didn't say it. He did. Amen. Verse number 20. Eh. And he which testifieth these things saith, surely I come quickly. That's what Jesus said. I'm, I, I will be back. Now, that word quickly for us, we may be thinking, brother, that's been 2,000 years ago. That ain't too quick. What he's saying is just as soon, at the earliest possible nanosecond, that the fulfillment of the time has happened. And that moment, I will not delay. When all things are fulfilled, in that moment... I'm not going to wait another day and say, well, yeah, I know things are ready today, but I'm not quite ready to go, so I'm going to pack up and go tomorrow. It's not like that. What it is, amen, aren't you glad? He's on ready. He's waiting on, he's waiting on the, uh, the gun to go off. You know what I'm saying? He's, uh, all, he's, all he's waiting on is the father said, go get him, boy. Uh, and he's on his way. He said, even so, I come quickly. It also indicates to us that it's going to be sudden and without any other type of warning. And the reason I say any other type of warning is because tonight you're getting your warning. Every time you stand and hear a gospel message, you're being warned he's coming back. Amen. Some folks said that he needs to give us a warning. He's, he's giving you warning. The Holy Spirit tells you every single time you hear the Word of God and you've been convicted in your heart, you know he's coming. I told you this morning, every time I see him, I'm going to say, you know. You know he's coming. You can't stand there and say you didn't give me warning. You got your warning. He's coming back quickly, so there's not going to be any other previous warning. It's, he's just, he's going to go, man. When, as soon as he gets the word, whoo, he's gone. You think they're the changing in the moment and the twinkling of an eye is fast? I think he's going to leave the throne faster. Choo! He's going to be here. On the cloud, the shout, the trump, and up we go. In a moment, he's been waiting all this time. He won't wait any longer. Jesus said in the last, very last verse that I've got here for you tonight, he says, he which testifieth these things says, surely I come quickly. And then I believe John couldn't contain himself. I believe John said, Whoo, even so, Amen. Even so, come quickly. Amen. Amen. I agree with you. I think it's the, um, the right thing. And I want to talk to you tonight about the water of life freely. When we look at this gift of salvation, I'm not quite sure why it's so difficult for us to give away the greatest thing that's ever been known to man. Have you ever thought about that? People would rather buy something from you they don't need for a price that they can't afford. Am I right? Amen. To put in a place that they're never going to use it. They'd rather, they'd rather buy from you something they don't need than to receive what they absolutely must have for free. It's an amazing thing. Uh, that's why if you go out and you preach to people, if you live good, then you can make it to heaven. You can fill up a church building. 
You do right, do good, follow the rules, we can get you in. You can cram people in because they feel like they're purchasing something. But when we start talking about, he said, I will give to you freely, folks go, I don't know about all that. There must be a catch. I, I, I don't believe in that, uh, that, that free stuff. There must be something I have to do. It don't sound reasonable that I could receive. Um, I was listening to uh, stories of great Christians. I don't know if you guys ever hear that on the radio. And about John Newton and and the, it, one of the struggles of the guy that wrote Amazing Grace and and the one of the struggles that John Newton went through, who was a slave trader. One of the struggles he went through is he couldn't quite get past the idea that God could forgive his sin so freely that he could he could be forgiven without somehow himself having to pay the cost it it took days for that to sink through but when it finally got through he wrote Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch just like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. That's what happened right there, see? Because he finally understood that this is something that cannot be earned. Jesus said, he, the bride says, come, the spirit and the bride says, come, and let him that hears say, come, and let him that is a thirst, anybody, anybody, anybody that's a thirst, let them come, and then whosoever will. I told you when I read that to you earlier, it connects me back to John chapter 3 and verse 16 that tells us uh, that God, God so loved the world that he sent uh, his only son to whosoever will, right? And so here we find that whosoever will thing again. So that whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Uh, there's a fountain that's flowing that gives eternal, everlasting, eternal life, joy, peace, harmony, and a relationship with the Holy God, and it's absolutely free to the taker. Absolutely. But what do, you, what do you have to do? You have to be willing. Whosoever will. Now, he wants, this is God. This is Jesus' side of it. He wants or requires nothing. He don't want any payment. He don't want you to, uh, uh, to, to return him anything. He doesn't want you to have to owe him. Try to work it off after you get it. He's offering it freely. Now, when he says freely, we mean there's no strings at all. I offer, you receive. And when you do, you'll never be the same. That's what he says. Now, he, he requires or he doesn't want anything in return. Can we get that through our minds? Can, can we understand that the reason that we come here is not, is not because we feel like we got some kind of an obligation to meet in order to earn our way in, but we're here out of the great gratitude of our heart tonight. To say glory to the one who gave us eternal life, who gave us eternal life through the sacrifice of himself. There is no God like our God. So we come and we willingly, we can't stay away. Not wild horses couldn't drag us away because we understand and know the precious gift that was given to us. Where would you be today if it wasn't for Jesus? You'd be dead in hell probably. Richard would be dead in hell. Donnie, I know Donnie would be dead in hell today. If Listen, I know Buddy would be burning in an eternal fire damnation in hell today had it not been for the precious blood of Jesus Christ. He reached down and rescued me, bless God. He raised me up. Listen, I, I want you to know that this... This precious gift, we just can't take it for granted. Man, don't you get complacent on me. Don't you get to where you think this is just something that we do. That there's somehow, because COVID has locked us up in our homes for three months, sometimes I begin to think people think they can make it without him. They, listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about those that were, that were maybe halfway in and halfway out. And I'm worried that they may think, oh, man, 
I, I, don't, I don't need the church thing. I survived it three months without it. I, don't need, I, I can watch it on the internet or I can, I can watch it on the TV. But listen, if you're watching right now, you need Jesus. And you, you're, there should be something burning in your heart that makes you want to come and bow at the nail-scarred feet of the one who died on Calvary for you. Amen. And cry, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, thou art holy, and to you deserve all the praise and all the glory. Amen. Man, that, that ought to be, that's, that's the reason we come, amen, to lift him up. There ain't nobody, man, I, wouldn't, I, I don't want to miss it for nothing. I rearrange all my schedules so I can be here. My whole life, because I want to be here. I got to let him know how much I, I appreciate, how grateful, thankful I am for the gift that he gave freely. Whew. For those of you that are rather, relatively new with me, I'm going to give you something I hadn't gave out in a while, and that's my, a definition. My definition, Buddy's definition of faithfulness. But he's always said that faithfulness is this. Faithfulness is you will be here if you can. If you can. And if you can't, you want to be. Okay? That's what my definition of faithfulness is. You don't lay out because you choose to. If you, if you ain't here, it's because something hindered you and there was no way to get around it. And if... Something hindered you and there's no way to get around it. Your heart's broken because you want it to be. I know the times that we go uh, to Tennessee or we've gone to revival services and, and uh, I think about y'all getting ready to start church service and I'm somewhere else. Mm, my wife will tell you, she and I both, we stop and pray for you because our heart is right here in the midst of this congregation. When, when, hey, when I joined in with you, I joined in with you. I am part of who you are. I'm not just playing around with this. I'm not halfway. I, I am your brother, and I am here for the duration. Amen? Amen. Count on me. You can count on me. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I promise you that's what, I'm not going anywhere. Listen, I, I'm looking at this verse, verse number t uh, 17 in chapter number 22. Uh, here is, you're invited, and if you're willing... Now, I think a lot of folks don't know if they're willing or not. But if you're willing, you can come. What's the other requirements? There is none. What's the other requirements? There is none. Is it, does it matter where you've been or who you are? Does it, does it matter uh, what, what you've done? No. no. Come. Whosoever is willing to come. There's a, there's a fountain, you know, down in St. Augustine, they got that fountain of youth thing that uh, Ponce de Leon was looking for. You know? They, and, and they got that place. And, and I, I've heard, I remember reading about that in school before we ever went down and, and looked at that, uh, that city water spigot coming out. And I, and I thought about, <laughs> hey man, <laughs> y'all smell the chlorine? Uh, anyway. So you, 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 you think about, he's looking for a place that he's heard about. Ponce de Leon, he's heard, he's heard about there's a place where there is a fountain of water that if you drink of that water, you live forever. And ain't nothing going to stop him from exploring till he finds it. Who? Just think about that for a minute. What if we was as passionate about the real fountain of everlasting life. I'm slobbering all over myself. Amen. I, I, it's just running on. But, but, but think about it. It's the fountain of everlasting life. And it's not hidden. It's not hidden. That ain't no glory. It ain't no city pipe. Listen, it's not hidden. He has, we has brought it to you. He comes to you. He doesn't hide somewhere and challenge you to find it. He brings it to you and he manifests. He makes it known. He displays it to you and says, drink, drink freely and you'll never thirst again. Drink freely and you will have everlasting. Drink freely and you will have a relationship with a holy God. 
It don't cost you anything. No, you don't got to change nothing. All you got to do is drink and you'll be changed. Hallelujah. All you got to do is take, it, it changes you from the inside out. Listen, you ain't got to, you ain't got to stop nothing. You ain't got to quit doing anything. Just take, take a drink. Be willing to receive this free gift. You're invited if you're willing and he will change you. Folks don't like changes. They just don't like changes at all. This last three months has proved that. Folks don't like changes at all. So I tell you what, uh, uh, they, they're resistant to come in because they think that they may have to give up something. They think they may have to. I know folks said, uh, I, I would go down there and get saved, Pastor, but man, I don't think I can give up my drinking. I don't think I can give up this. I don't think I can give up that. Listen, you ain't got to worry about that. Just come and drink. Now, let me, let me say to you, even if you don't believe, if you even don't believe in God, or maybe you don't feel like that you have a heart of repentance within you, why don't you come and taste anyway? Amen? <laughs> Amen? We know. <laughs> we know what will happen, right? Won't you come and taste it anyway? Maybe you don't believe right now. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Maybe you don't have a heart of repentance. That's okay. Drink anyway. Just taste it. Man, if, if you take it in, oh, oh, man, what a change. That's exactly right. I can't tell you how many people I know that eternal life must have snuck up on. <laughs> Folks didn't know what they was getting into whenever, hey, man, they didn't know what they was getting into when the blood spilled over on them. Hey, right. hey man, they come in, they were expecting just maybe to attend a church service, then the Holy Ghost grabs them. Yeah. Whoa! Yeah. They didn't have no idea. They didn't intend. Man, I wasn't intending to get up to here in church. I wasn't intending to get covered up by spiritual stuff. I just wanted to go to church one time or two. And the next thing you know, man, you got washed all over. And you're going like, man, there's something different. Somebody in me, and it ain't me. <laughs> Even if you don't believe or you don't have repentance within, why don't you just come anyway? Why don't you receive and, and believe? Why don't, you, why don't you just be willing to repent? And you can receive your willingness to repent is what I should say. You could receive that willingness. Uh, we, we said sometimes if you're not willing, are you willing to be made willing? Yeah. You, you can receive that willingness from him. Once you hear the old, old story, once you know how he suffered on the cross, once you, once you know that he loved you so much that he came down from heaven, became a man, the little baby walked on this earth, was rejected and despised of men, had your sin placed upon him. And he bore in his body the stripes and the bruises and the beatings that should have fell upon you and I because of our sin. Died on the cross, not for his sins, but for ours. And when you see that story, well, I don't know how you can, how you can walk away and not then be willing to say, I, I need to give him my all. I need to give exchange of my life for his life. So this is the moral of this story. When it says that uh, whosoever will let him take of the water of life freely, I think we could say, come just as you are. We sing a, an invitation song sometimes that says, Just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. No other, no other preparation, just that I, just, I come in and I know that you took my place. I don't have anything to offer. There's nothing that I can do, but I hear that you're offering free eternal life. Free drinks. From the fountain of the water of eternal life, I, I'm ready to take it. Come just as you are and take of the water of life freely. I wonder, let me just ask you this question. I'm about ready to shut up. Shut up. Stop. I wonder how much, how much if it's free and he invites you to come in, how much can you have?
I want to stop here for a second. Now, I know I've been talking to you about salvation and the preciousness about drinking this water and coming into eternal life. But once you have done that, have you ever thought about going back to the... Have you ever thought about going back to the fountain? Yeah. Woo! To the spout where the glory comes out. Have you ever thought about just getting underneath that and say, Whoa! Man, it's free. I want some more. Yeah, give me all. Give me all. Cover me. Like Peter said, not my feet only. <laughs> right. Cover me. I want, I want to be filled. Yeah, I want to be filled. Man, I, I, want, I, I want enough for today and I'll be back again tomorrow. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, listen, I wonder if we could... <laughs> Y'all just excuse me while I have a spell, amen? Isn't this good stuff? Man, you, you, to know him, to know him is one thing, and to remember what he's done, and then to go back and revisit and say, Lord, I want some underneath here. And, you know, I, I want to I take it in. I want it all over me. I want it all around me. I want it in me. Amen. I want it everywhere. I want, I want it to be everything. I want it to be the essence of who I am. So come just as you are and take of this water freely as much, not only to whosoever will, but as much as whosoever will, will. As much, as often, as often as you will. Have you been walking through a desert for... I'm going to wait right here for a second. Let this one catch up with you. Have you been walking through a dry place? Have you been going through a place where you've been going like, man, I just can't feel the Lord anymore. I just, I don't know, man. It just seems like God ain't speaking to me. I don't know what's wrong with that pastor. And I don't know what's wrong with the song leader. And, uh, you, you, can't, you feel like God maybe has just dropped you off in the in your desert and you feel like there is no, there's nothing. And, and he says all along, whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. Man, you, you've, been, you've been trudging through a sandy, dry place, and all the while he's saying, look, I will splash you down. I will cover you up. I will, I will, I will, I will overflow you with waters that you don't even know. Why don't you come in and receive it? Receive it. Ask, ask him, say, Lord, show me that. Show me one more time. Take me back one more time. Remind me where you brought me from and where I could have been. Pull back the curtains of memory every now and then and remind me, dear Lord, remind me. Remind me where you brought me from. Oh, my goodness. I'm, listen, it, you, you come just as you are. You take of the water of life freely. I believe not only can you come and anybody can come, but I believe you can come back. Now, I'm not talking about trying to get salvation again. I believe you can get uh, refilled. Amen. I believe that with all of my heart. I believe in being refilled. I believe in being having a fresh anointing. Oh, man, I took a bath uh, this morning. I'll take another one tomorrow. Maybe tonight. I don't know. It depends on if my wife lets me get into bed or not. You know what I'm saying? If she puts a foot against me, I know that means I'm supposed to go get me one. Listen, I, I, I had to get one every day, every day. If, if it was good yesterday and it was and it, and it satisfied, but listen, I need another one tomorrow. And I'll take another one the next day. Every day, it feels good, man. And y'all ain't, ain't had nothing to you. To, oh, I shouldn't say all this. But I, when I get in the shower, man, I'm, I'm letting that hot water beat on my back, and I'm going like, oh. oh. My wife says, what are you doing in there? Enjoying. That, it, it's the best feeling in the world, man. All of the ten, I feel like every tension in me is going down the drain. You know what I'm talking about? Man, I take that handheld thing, and I just I stick it down my throat almost. I just, man, I'm washing up inside my ears, and I, I, I just feel so good. I want to get it everywhere, and I, want, and, I, and I have to keep reminding myself, you have to leave some hot water for her. <laughs> I'd stay in there for hours. Feels good. That's the natural water. What do you think about that spirit? <laughs> Son, tell me. Man, you could just... You just get underneath that fountain and just say, Lord, you turn it up. Turn it up. I'm here, you know. Uh, listen, I'm going to finish with this. I think it is this water of life freely. It's undeserved. Amen. Amen. We do, like I said earlier, don't get what we deserve. I, we don't deserve it. I, I don't care how good you think you are. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's you thinking about you, and you ain't good as you think you are, I can promise. It's, it's undeserved. 
<laughs> it's unmerited, amen. It's unmerited. You, you can't do anything. You can't earn it in any way. There's, there's nothing you can do to have God say, oh, hang on a minute, I got to give you a medal for that one right there. You don't do that any way God works, man. You, it's undeserved, it's unmerited, and it's more valuable than what deserved or merited could ever be. Amen. In fact, it was so valuable that the only way it could be purchased. Are you with me still? That's exactly right. With the blood of God himself. That's the only way it could be purchased. The blood of angels would not do. Uh, the, the, the perfect uh, heifer or the perfect lamb, uh, the most uh, spotless animal that they could bring in for the sacrifice, or the highest archangel in heaven could not pay the debt. It took the sinless, pure blood of the holy God. All of it. All of it to pay for our sins. That's how valuable it is. Undeserved, amen. Unmerited, amen. You couldn't deserve it and you couldn't merit it. There's nothing you could do. It has to be free. That's the only way it could come. Somebody higher than you and me got to buy it. Somebody higher than you and me have got to pay the price. Somebody that loves you and me enough who received this precious gift then turns around and says, here, I want to give it unto you. I want to share it with everybody, whosoever will. And that's what he's done. I want to close tonight, but I don't want you to forget what we've talked about. This fountain, I said I wasn't going to go no further, but I got to tell you one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you remember the Israelites in the desert as they traveled for 40 years, right? And remember, they needed water in the desert. Now, there's millions of these guys, plus their animals. I mean, they need a lot of water. We ain't talking about that you come in with an igloo and take care of them. We're talking about they need a river to satisfy their needs for their animals and for their own uh, personal consumption. So the Bible tells us that there is water that flowed out of a rock that Moses smote the first time and spoke to the next was supposed to speak to. Actually, he smote it twice, right? right? You guys know about that. But see here, and the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Corinthians that that rock, that spiritual rock, followed them yeah. in the wilderness. Mm, you're never going to run out. You're going to always need. And you're traveling in this dry place. You're traveling in this earth waiting for the day that he fulfills the promise to take us up out of here. But he has not left you. He is right there with you. And the water still flows. Why don't you turn around and take your sip every now and again? Why don't every now and then you put your head underneath it and go, whoo, it so sure feels good. And somebody says, what are you doing in there? I'm just basking in the love and the mercy and the grace of the Almighty God. I, I'm just sitting here thinking about how good God is to save me and wash my sins away. And he's took me in and he doesn't hold, he's thrown all my sins as far away as the east is from the west and never to be remembered against me again. I'm just thinking about how good, how good it is to be a child of the king. Undeserved and unmerited. I just can't, I'm just got my head under there and it feels good. I don't have to worry about leaving any hot water for nobody. I can soak it all up. I'm going to stay here a while. It's a wonderful thing to know. Salvation is the greatest gift ever known to men, right? The second thing is, is the assurance of that salvation. Tonight, I want to ask you this question. Are you saved and you know it? Amen. Are you saved and you know it? The greatest gift I ever got was being born again. The second greatest thing that ever happened to me was the assurance of that salvation. Come underneath that flood. Man, come underneath that place where I understood that it's not by works, but it's by His grace. And He has washed me, and I am not the man that I used to be. I hope every individual here tonight can say yes to that. I hope everybody watching us tonight can say yes to that. If not, then tonight, man, tonight you don't need to leave this place till you come down and see me, because I need something. I got I to gotta give you a drink of living water. I want to introduce you to the one who is the water. And I want you to take of him freely. Father, tonight as we bow before you, I'm so grateful for the gift, the gift of eternal life. 
the gift of knowing that I am no longer a citizen of this world, but Lord, I am a sojourner and a stranger in this world. I'm a citizen of heaven and I'm on my way home. Lord, I'm so grateful to know that one of these days you're going to return on the clouds to, to receive us up to yourself so that we'll, you'll take us back so that wherever you are, that's where we shall be forevermore. Lord, I can't hardly wait for that day. But until that day, I pray, God, I'll never quit visiting the well of the water of life. I pray, God, that every, every time I think about it, I pray I'll, I'll make a trip back, and one more time, one more time, I'll fill her up again. One more time, I'll bask in the, in the idea of the love, the mercy, and the grace that set my soul free and paid my sin debt. Lord, I pray every believer here goes away with a, a fresh anointing of their salvation. I pray, God, it got a little wet tonight. And I pray, Lord, that it just continues to desire the, the flowing river of the fountain of the water of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. As you leave tonight, if there's somebody that would like to talk to me about salvation, meet me right down here. I'd love to pray with you. Pastor Buddy here. Thank you for joining us today for our